HCG promotes weight loss and in this video I'm going to tell you why and how. But before I do, please subscribe to the channel, like the video and comment down below for the sake of the algorithm if you haven't already. Now let's get started. Remember, steroidogenesis in men is defined at three points, the hypothalamus, pituitary and the gonads, the testicles. The hypothalamus produces gonadotropin releasing hormone and in response, the pituitary produces luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone, LH and FSH. And the gonads in response to LH and FSH produce testosterone and proliferate and differentiate sperm. You can think of HCG like a placental form of LH, a form of luteinizing hormone produced by the placenta that women carry when they're pregnant. In fact, it's what pregnancy tests test for. Although the placental form of HCG is the most notably different than LH and FSH, there are actually four forms of HCG commonly found in people. The first is the placental form of HCG. A second is a pituitary form of HCG released in men as a response to gonadotropin releasing hormone from the hypothalamus. When the pituitary produces LH, it also produces a pituitary form of HCG. The two other forms are called hyperglycosylated forms. One is the full form of HCG. Another form is only the beta subunit. And this hyperglycosylated form of the beta subunit is very active in cancers and actually signals at the receptor for transforming growth factor beta. That's the growth factor that seems to be causal in the development of androgenic alopecia, for example, and also is a growth factor very involved in the development of scar tissue in the liver and kidneys and so on as we age. Now, what's the deal with these alpha and beta subunits of HCG? Well, HCG is a 36 KDA glycoprotein. It contains two subunits. The alpha subunit of the molecule is shared entirely with LH, FSH, and TSH, the signal for the thyroid to grow in the body. On the other hand, HCG has a beta subunit that is not shared with either LH, FSH, or TSH, although the beta unit subunit of HCG actually shares about 85% of its homology with luteinizing hormone's beta subunit. Another major difference between HCG and luteinizing hormone LH is their half-lives. LH's half-life is about 30 minutes long, while at HCG's half-life is over 35 hours. It's about 80 times longer. Now, in terms of HCG's activity in the body, HCG does, does a couple of things a little bit differently than luteinizing hormone. One of them is actually shared with luteinizing hormone, and that's the transcription of an enzyme called 3-beta-hydroxysteroid dehydrogenase. This enzyme converts pregnenolone into progesterone. In addition, HCG also modulates the LH receptor. It has a stronger affinity for the LH receptor and efficacy than luteinizing hormone does itself. Third, interestingly, LH promotes the synthesis or secretion of a hormone called relaxin. Relaxin is a cousin of insulin, and relaxin is the hormone thought to be involved in the development of diastasis recti in the linea alba of bodybuilders. That's when the abs of bodybuilders seem to split. Well, relaxin is very involved in the uh, change of configuration of collagen. So relaxin is involved in the stretching of collagen in our bodies and so on. Interestingly, HCG treatment in women actually promotes relaxin levels as well. And now we come to the most interesting part of HCG's effects in the body that are different than LH, and that's HCG's modulation of thyroid activity. In 1976, it was first observed that HCG levels were associated inversely with some thyroid hormone levels. In fact, it turns out that one unit of HCG is about equivalent to one micro unit of TSH in its stimulation of thyroid growth. Other than HCG's potent activity at the TSH receptor that signals for growth of the thyroid, HCG also stimulates thyroid activities in several other manners. For example, HCG increases the transcription of the sodium iodide symporter gene, thereby increasing iodide uptake in the thyroid. In cultured rodent thyroid cells, HCG treatment also increased adenylate cyclase activity as well as DNA transcription in the thyroid. So, HCG can sort of act like TSH in growing the thyroid, as well it can also increase thyroid activity separately. Because of HCG's effects on thyroid activity, HCG treatment can actually lower TSH levels, because HCG sort of acts like TSH, and can increase thyroid volume over time. So what are all the takeaways from this, if somebody's on HCG treatment? 
Well, number one, if they're on HCG treatment, they may want to beware of thyroid growth in the long term. So what they may want to do is limit iodine consumption because iodine consumption has been associated with expansion in thyroid volumes across the world. They may want to pay careful attention to their blood tests in regards to their thyroid TSH, T3, T4 values. And they may want to do scans on their thyroids every couple of years to ensure that they are not developing nodules that might grow into thyroid cancers, a cancer that is on the rise globally. Moreover, if somebody is doing HCG treatment long term, they may want to consider replacing thyroid hormones to lessen the stimulus on the thyroid to grow in the long term in hopes of avoiding potential uh, thyroid cancers in the long term. Anyway guys, I hope this was informative for you. I had no idea despite my extensive use of HCG, that it modulated thyroid hormones. I discovered this recently talking to my friend Boston Lloyd on the podcast, when Boston mentioned that he always noticed that he lost more body fat when he was on HCG. Anyway guys, I hope this was interesting and I hope to see you soon.